My biggest problem with the iPhone is that I've built an entire life around it. Everything I own seems to interact in some form or fashion with my phone and it feels almost impossible sometimes to leave it. I always come back to it. I'm like a drug addict. I know it's wrong, but I still continue to do it day in and day out, even though sometimes I'll stop for a little bit. It's just such a unique device. There's never been something that's been so capable that has ever been given to humans. There was the printing press, but that thing filled up a room. A phone is is the printing press and the wheel and fire at times Combined times 10, the amount of information, the amount of data that you can receive is just unbelievably remarkable. It is, it's the best invention. It's, it's number one. It's more important than any of the other ones and it's the best. And that's why I have such a tough time leaving it. From texting to taking photos of my family, it's impossible. You, you switch to a cheaper phone, they always run Android and the text messaging never works as well. You can't get pictures quite as well. You can't send pictures quite as well. You might not be able to take pictures on the device that you're using. Everything just seems to work a lot less well. And it's frustrating and it's so frustrating because I want, I want to go back to a time when phones didn't exist, but it, it's hard. It's a hard way to live. I'm not saying it's impossible because that sounds like, oh, well, just do it. Like everybody did it for thousands of years up until now, but we've all built our lives around it. It's not just that I'm addicted to it and I can't get rid of it ever. I, I definitely can, but there are just so many inconveniences that come along with getting rid of it. The, the, one of the big ones for me is the Authenticator app. I'm sure everybody here that works and that has a job where they have to use a computer has to use an authenticator app. They, they have to sign in and then they have to use the face ID or the thumbprint to make sure that it's them and they authenticate it on their phone and then they, it lets you log in. You can't get that on a super cheap flip phone. It just doesn't exist. Another thing is the safety features. My wife and I, I like to track her sometimes when she goes out and she's been gone for two, three hours and I thought she'd be home by now and I just like to check in to make sure that everything's okay without calling her or without texting her. If she hasn't responded to my text messages because she doesn't have her phone or she hasn't seen my calls and she missed a couple of calls, it's nice to just pull up my phone and say, oh, okay, my wife is still at Target or whatever, whatever that may be. Those things are... Those are unbelievably powerful and awesome tools to have. I know all of us, I'm sure, have benefited from something like that from one way or another. Another thing is my running. I run predominantly outside. I've recently been on the treadmill because it's been so cold outside, but I typically like to run outside. And when I run outside, it is so nice to have the phone and it tells me how far I've gone. When I run in my neighborhood, I roughly know about how far certain things are because I've done the run so many different times. But when I wanna run somewhere else, I don't know. If I need to run six miles, I need to run six miles. I mean, that's what the training plan calls for. And sometimes it's marked and sometimes it's not marked. So that is another, if you're, it's a very first world problem and I totally understand that, but that's, that's something. It's like I built my life around that feature. And it feels weird complaining about these things because I'm appreciative of them and I'm glad that they exist. It makes my life significantly easier. That's the whole point of the phone. That's why it's the invention. Another thing that's so simple is just taking photos and videos. This camera right here is a Canon R6. It was exceedingly expensive. It was $2,500, maybe, maybe even more with the lens and the microphone that I used on top. I don't really wanna be lugging around $3,000 worth of gear that's not my phone. Yeah, my phone's expensive. I got a good deal on it, but my phone's still expensive nonetheless. And that's so small that it fits in my pocket. It never leaves my pocket, it's always there. So if I need to take a video of something, I could pull it out, take a video, pull it out, take a picture. Those moments can happen instantly. But with a big camera like this, and this is a smaller camera, Canon R6 isn't the biggest camera ever, but it's a camera, it's, it's not a point and shoot, but it's not like a big cinema camera, it's a normal size DSLR. And this camera is too big for me to just leave in my car. It's too big for me to leave in my pocket. It's too big for me to leave on the counter. And it's, it's expensive and I don't wanna lose that. I don't wanna leave it in my car one day and somebody ex not accidentally steals it. They would on purpose steal it. I don't want that to happen because I like my camera and I like to keep my stuff. And this camera really doesn't ever leave my office. I mean, occasionally it will leave it, but under direct supervision of myself, typically. Another thing is the music I listen to on my runs. When I'm running and I'm running inside, there's a Bluetooth player that I have, a Bluetooth player, I sound old, a Bluetooth speaker that I connect my phone to, <laughs> and the phone's a Bluetooth player. And 
I, I run with music. I really like listening to loud music when I run. I'm typically not a loud music guy, but I like it when I run. And it's really enjoyable. It makes the experience way better. Could I run without it? Absolutely. Could I do? Could I skip having all these things? Yes, I can. I've done it. I've done it in so many challenges before. I'm sure I'll do it in many challenges since. But it's I've built an entire life around the phone. And everything seems to have it built in. Cars are built around having phones these days. My wife's car is Apple CarPlay. My my car doesn't, but my wife's car does have Apple CarPlay, and that is a great feature. I don't have to look down on my phone when I'm getting directions. I can just look at the little screen right there, and it'll tell me where I need to turn. And there are so many little things like that that are awesome. They're they're great things to have, and I don't and I don't want to lose those because they 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 were invented to make my life better, and they do make my life better. They make your life better too if you have access to any number of these features. I'm sure there are more on on your end that you like, but these are the things that matter to me that my phone has. And I, I love that, I love that part of it, but I know that the phone can be so detrimental and it's and it's such an addictive and powerful tool that one minute you could be reading a book, the next minute you pull up your phone, you get a text from your buddy and he says, oh, look at this video, you watch the video and you start scrolling. And then 30 minutes goes by and you're like, wait, what was I doing? What was, I, oh, I've been, I've been like on my phone this entire time. And, and that's a thing that happens, and, it ha and it's happened to all of us, and I know it's happened to all of us, and if you say it hasn't happened to you, you're lying, or you're not lying, but I think you're lying. <laughs> but it, it's, it's an addictive device, it really, it really truly is, and I'm so aware of the fact that it's addictive, and so I wanna get rid of it. I want to not have that addiction near me. I think it's best, there's no reason for an alcoholic to leave alcohol in the house and say, well, it's fine, because I don't drink alcohol anymore, I'm giving it up. Why would you leave the alcohol in the home? Nobody would do that. You would get rid of it. And it's the same thing with a smartphone. It's like you you would get rid of it, but it's not alcohol and it's something that is it's it's borderline necessary. And I, I kind of hate saying that because I don't want it to be necessary. And again, I know there's going to be a lot of people that say, "Well, Scott, like we lived without these phones for I mean, the last 10 years we've had these phones, and or last 15 years we had these phones, and every day before that we didn't. And that's true, but every day before that, the entire society, entire country, entire world wasn't built around everybody having a smartphone. It's just part of who we are. The way people communicate is through text messaging now. It's through pictures. It's through, it's through a form of medium that we didn't use 15, 20 years ago. So if you try to buck that trend and go to a flip phone, which I've done, or go to like a dumb phone, it can happen, but people people don't like to communicate with you as much. And I like to be communicated with because I'm a human, and humans like to communicate with other humans. <laughs> so it, it's a really it's a really tough thing that I have been working through, and I and I don't really have an answer for it. I hate my smartphone. I feel like my phone is in an abusive relationship where I know it's bad for me, but I feel like I need it. And I think that that's ultimately the problem is I could sit here and justify all these great features. I could talk about the texting, the photos, the Bluetooth, CarPlay, uh, safety features, the distance tracking while I'm running, uh, the authentication. I could talk about all these remarkable features, the way we communicate now and how it's completely changed. And if, and if I don't change with it, if I don't continue to do what everybody else is doing, I'm not gonna be able to communicate with everybody else the way that everybody else is communicating with everybody else. And I'll miss out on something and I, and I just will. And I have to just understand that I will. And and that's hard. It's a hard thing to just, it's a hard thing to step away from it because we're humans. We're like built, we're built to be, we're built to communicate with each other. That's why solitary confinement is one of the worst punishments you can give somebody because it locks them away, away from people, not just in prison, but away from people. That's why it's the worst one. And so that that's why I struggle. I struggle with the phone. I have my family and I do talk to them every day. But they live in the house with me and I talk to them every single day. I wanna to talk to other people. I wanna to talk to my friends. I wanna to talk to my, my parents or my sis siblings. I wanna to talk to other people. And and it's tough. It's a tough thing to try and work out. I, I don't know the answer. That, that's why I hate the iPhone. It's like, I just feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with it. And I have done my best to get rid of it, done my best to, to, get, to stop using it so much. And the reality is, is that the only way to fix it is either to just get rid of it and just not care what, just not care, just lose out on those features, <laughs> which is weird because I've had these features now for 10 years and I've enjoyed them for 10 years and, I, and I've constructed a life around having those features for 10 years. Or what I could do is just continue to use the phone and do my best to try and not use it too much and be aware of when I'm using it. I don't know, I mean, 
that's a lot easier said than done, at least for me. I don't know. Maybe I just have an addictive personality, but I don't, I don't really believe that this isn't a problem for like almost anybody, especially younger people. Uh, I think that it's a, it's a conversation that we need to continue to have. I think, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. Uh, but that's why I hate the iPhone because it's the best thing that's ever been invented and it's incredibly addictive and it, it, it really truly is. It's the most remarkable tool that's ever been invented. And, and to give that up, to give up all that information, to give up that access is, is, is hard because if you were, if, if this was thousands of years ago in the library of Alexandria and somebody said, we want you to study here. We, this is what we want you to do. We want you to study here. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say no. You wouldn't say no to that. You would say yes. And that's what the phone is, is you wouldn't say no to the library of Alexandria on steroids. You would say yes. You would say, yes, I want to do this. And to say no to that is hard, but it's not, that doesn't mean it's, it's wrong to say no, just because it's difficult. Most things that are difficult are probably right. That doesn't make it not difficult. <laughs> so I guess suffice to say, I have been going back and forth between using my iPhone and using the light phone. And there are just some things about the light phone that I really, really love. And there are some things about it that I just really, really hate. But that's just something that I need to, I need to find that medium between using a smartphone, I guess, and not using a smartphone. And is it is it a one size fit all thing? Or is it something that maybe if if I change, other people will just have to adapt to my change. If they want to communicate with me, they'll just know to call me. Maybe maybe that's the fix is that I just go forward with it for a month or two months or three months or four months. And I just keep pushing forward with it. And then at the end of it, hopefully everybody just understands that he doesn't have an iPhone and he's not going to have an iPhone. And that's just it. If you want to contact him, then you got to call him. And I guess maybe that's what I need to do. And maybe that's what I will do. Maybe that's 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 what the end that's what the resolution is here. I just talked talked my problems out with you. So thank you for watching and listening. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I hope it didn't come off as as whiny or complaining. I I I really am appreciative of the iPhone and of the internet. That's why I speak so highly of them, but I also understand how how vapid and how and how harmful they can be. Which is why I know you gotta you have to manage it in in a proper way, and I'm trying to learn how to do that. And I think that that's this is something that everybody is gonna have to learn because we were given these devices without guidelines, and you know lots of people use these things for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours a day, and we need to stop doing that. So thank you for watching the video. I will see you in the next one. This has been Scott with Techno Eclipse. Peace out.